Good morning, legends. Welcome to the beginning of a new trading week. We're going to talk about the carnage on the charts last night. Had a really nice uptrend going through the entire weekend. And then, of course, Monday US comes and takes it all back. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to zoom out and take a bit of a bigger picture look because there's a couple of things that I want to point out that we should be aware of. We're going to talk CME charts. We're going to talk RSI. We're going to talk fear and greed. There's a lot coming up in this video. But before we get into it, just a bit of a gift for you guys. As you know, my preferred exchange to trade on, of course, is OKX. And I have been in discussion with them over the last week or so to get a better deal on trading fees. And they have come through with the goods. So I have a new link in the description of this video down below, which will get you 15% off fees. I think that's one of the highest percentage discounts out there. And they also have an up to $500 bonus for new accounts. So even if you have an OKX account, it's very easy easy to start a new one, just need a new email address and you can have a new account within five minutes. It's worth setting up a new account to get that higher trading fee discount because especially if you're trading smaller timeframes and you're trading often, those fees can really add up over time. So be sure to grab that link from the description of this video before we're done today. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Also, don't forget to smash that like subscribe button. Everybody tends to run away in a bear market. So every like really helps. So let's just first talk about what happened over the weekend and last night. Because after this sell off here, we seem to hold a pretty nice uptrend for the entire weekend. And then just a few hours ago, we had this dramatic sell off. So that was caused by this here. Governor Bailey, the governor of the Bank of England, is speaking about the possibility of raising interest rates again. And that just sent the market back down all over again. Now, we do have some other news events coming up this week, which may make make for a pretty tricky week. On Wednesday, Melbourne time, 2.20 a.m., we have Powell speaking again. Thursday, 4 a.m. time, we have FOMC meeting minutes. And then Friday, Melbourne evening, we have more FOMC features and the CPI index. So it could be a very volatile and tricky week to trade. So just be prepared for that as a heads up. We may have a midweek reversal every day. <laughs> And it may be really quite difficult to predict the direction. And speaking of which, here's one thing I want to point out. On a higher time frame, like a four hour time frame, this W formation is currently still intact with just a really ugly potential right side of the W forming. And this side here really can come back down into this zone here and it will still be a valid W. The problem that I have with price action so far is that we are very much just in an accumulation zone. So between 28,700 and about 30,700, we have a $2,000 range where price has actually done nothing. And in addition to that, have a look at these EMAs. So we've got the 50 EMA and the 200 here that have come from a very significant downtrend. And for the last 10 days, they have started to flatten out and become horizontal. So I think trying to pick the long-term direction when the one hour EMAs are literally giving you no hint of direction, I think it's a bit premature to try and say that we're going to bounce here. We're even going to create that second peak of a W or we're going to fall even further. Let's have a look at the momentum in the candles. So when we hit this bottom here at 27K, it's very clear that the momentum was pushing to the upside, right? If you have a look at these full bodied white candles, then you can see how big they are. You can see the strength in the candles trying to push price up. Then we had a retracement and then the next push hit didn't really follow through. The bullish candles were much smaller in size compared to what what we saw here. And then ever since then, if we move to more recent times, it then flipped and the bearish candles actually started to gain strength. So we've got more strength in the bearish candles on this move here. This was a bit of a nothing. This Bart Simpson pattern here, there was more strength in the bearish candles here. 
And then again, more strength in the bearish candles here compared to this slow weekend build up. So in this range, you would say that the bears are in control because there's more momentum behind the bearish candles. However, then you could also argue maybe the bulls are in control because we continue to create higher lows, even with every sell off. And that's why at the end of the day, we're just in accumulation zone. And I think trying to pick it is not the most intelligent thing to do right now. So if that's what we're looking at on the one hour, then let's do out to the four hour and see if we can see anything different and we really can't on the four hour you can see the struggle for price to get and hold above the 50 EMA until we can get above that 50 EMA and hold above it we are accumulating. So I have a feeling in this zone, the market maker is accumulating. When we have a look at high block, have a look at the flip flop of the delta from longs to shorts to longs to shorts. And we're really not growing in that delta. We're sitting at around 2 billion to the shorts right now. When we were long, we got up to 4 billion. We're really talking very small numbers here. And we don't have retail really committing to trades using leverage right now. These circles up here, the shorts that were only open last night, if you have a look left, all of these circles are really small. That's really the first time that traders started to commit. And you can see here, we've got $110 million worth of 25X shorts at risk of liquidation if price was to get back to 30,300. We've got this other level, same amount at 29,800. And then we've got some 50X traders trying again at 29,500. So some level of commitment has started. However, that came from a move to the downside. So that goes to show that retail really believes that Bitcoin is going to head further down. And if that's the case, then it makes sense that the market maker is going to send price up because the market maker is always on the opposite side of our position. When we look at the fear and greed index, we're sitting at a 10 right now, which means retail are just really bearish. And then when we look at the trading light heat maps, we've got some fairly significant orders sitting at around 28,700 and a little bit either side of that number as well. And looking above current price, I don't really see anything as significant as what I'm seeing for buy orders below current price. So when we add that level to the chart, you can see that those buys are just right at the bottom of that accumulation zone. So what does that mean? Is that the bottom for now? Is that another chance to buy because we're then going to shoot out from there? Or is it just a buy because we're in a range? At the end of the day, just because we're in a range doesn't mean you can't trade it. If price were to come down to here and you traded it back up to the top of the range, you could still have a pretty good trade with a good risk to reward. But at some point, the range is going to break. And if you were to long off support and short off resistance, that's going to work until it breaks. And it could break favorably for you in the same direction as the trade you've taken, or it could break unfavorably to you. Now let's zoom out even more to the daily and see what we can see happening there. Once you zoom out and have a bigger picture, it becomes even more clear that this whole range here very much is just an accumulation zone. It seems to be a much tighter range than the last time we got stuck in accumulation zone here in July and June. So it does feel like a bit of a repeat of that going on right now. And every time we have a sell off, it's replaced with an equal green candle. Every time we have a green candle, it's replaced with an equal red candle. Now zooming out even more to the weekly, the only good news we really have on the weekly is that we're still above the 200 EMA. These are two areas of interest that I've marked out previously and they're based off the daily time frame. We have wicked into the first one and the first one did also keep us above the 200 EMA. So there is a chance that what's happening right now is we're just coming back into that range because there's liquidity left behind here. So we may revisit last week's low of around 26 and a half before we actually see any change in direction. But holding above this 200 EMA is one tick for the bulls at this point in time. We've also deviated very far from the 50 EMA on the weekly time frame. So at some point, price is going to bounce and try to get back there. And the same thing goes for the daily as well. We may come back up to retest this 800 EMA on the daily at around 35,000, but we've got to get above 30,700 first and hold above there before there's a chance of that. And now looking at the CME chart, 
we can see here on the daily time frame that that wick there did come into a very old gap so is it the market maker's intention to come back down and fill that gap? It's still a possibility. If we break the current range, then I would say we're heading down into around 26,000 to 24,500 kind of region. And on that note, I now want to talk about higher time frame RSI. Now, this is the BLX chart where we can get Bitcoin's history from basically when it started. And if we have a look at this chart on the weekly time frame, you can see down here that there's two main levels in Bitcoin's entire history where the RSI acted as a bear market bottom and we had an amazing bounce from there. The first level is 33 and the second one is 29. And these dates that you can see marked here are the week of the halving dates. So you can see here within each four year cycle, there is a bear market bottom and that bear market bottom at worst reaches around 29 RSI on the weekly time frame. There is also the significant level at 33. That's where we're at right now. Now, the first time we got to this level here, we had a significant bounce until we got right up to the 90s. And then we came down, but that was at the beginning of a halving, which led to a bull market. Then we returned. On this one here, once we reached that 29 level, we also came back up into the overbought region. Not as significant as the first one though. And then we revisited the 33. Once we revisited the 33, that then led to the round 94. And now we're back here again at the 33. So when we have a look at the first peak and where price was at the time to where it then ran after it reached that level, we're looking at a ridiculous increase that I'm not even going to say that number out loud because I don't want it to sound like that's what I'm saying is going to happen from here. If we then take a look at the second peak until we got up into the oversold again, we're looking at an 8,500% return. Now let's look at the third peak until we got back up into the highest RSI. We're looking at a 2,000% return. So it does show diminishing returns over time. Of course, that's going to be natural with the increase of how expensive Bitcoin is getting. But as you can see here, each time we did reach that peak on the weekly time frame, we did manage to hold around the 200 EMA each time. We may have come below it a little bit, but we didn't really continue to fall once we hit it. We really just went into an accumulation zone. And this one here was the Corona low, which was a bit of a different story anyway. So there is very much a high chance that as long as we're above the 200 EMA on the weekly time frame, that we are just going to be stuck in a multi-month accumulation zone and the goal of a multi-month accumulation zone is number one for the market maker to accumulate but also number two to bore you out of trying and what will happen is as soon as you get bored as soon as they win with that and you leave this thing will turn around and I can tell you from experience sitting through this June and July period it was only two months but I was teaching many traders during this time and many traders were getting frustrated with not being able to take trades and just wanting to see Bitcoin move. But either way, the point of showing you this is because we do have a really nice slow bleed happening on the RSI currently. We are at around that 33 kind of level and I would expect a bounce fairly soon to come back and give us another peak touch to that RSI trend level on the weekly, which could give us a pretty nice bounce. However, it will still be short term. So what does all of this mean for short term trades for this week? Going back to the one hour, what I'd like to see happen around here is actually a bullish divergence on the RSI because I think our only option right now is range trading. Then if price were to rebound from here and come back and pick up those buy levels and at the same time give us a bullish divergence on the one hour RSI, that could be a fairly good long trade. But I wouldn't just long straight from this big sell off here. I do want to come and see market structure actually change. But at the end of the day, you have to then reassess if it's a trade worth your time, because at best, we're looking at this level here for a take profit. But you also have to understand that it's a counter trend trade because we are under the EMAs. 
and that there is very much a likelihood as well that we could just come up to test those EMAs, fail to get above them again, and then actually come down into lower levels. This isn't the kind of price action that I personally like to trade. I think that's the moral of the story of this video is you need to be very careful of getting stuck into forcing trades with the current price action. We know where the buy orders are. The positive to the buy orders being at 28,700 is that it does does show that currently the market maker wants to keep price above this candle right here. And the reason for that is because there are traders trapped here in short positions waiting for price to come back so that they can get released. And so far the market maker has not bought price back there. But if we break this level here at 28.7 and they start heading down and these traders then get released, then we're at risk of further downside. So therefore the only play of the day for me, if I'm going to open a trade today, I want to see a bullish divergence on the RSI on the one hour time frame. And I want to see price hold above that 28.7. Other than that, I'm sitting out of the market until we have some clear direction. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave me a comment below, like, subscribe, all that stuff, you know what to do. And don't forget to grab that OKX link from the description of this video to get yourself increased reduction on trading fees and also up to $500 bonus. Have an amazing day and I'll see you guys tomorrow.